I believe Syracuse fell to number 19. You are correct. From number 12 to number 19 after the uh, after the weekend. Oof. A lot of experts got him going to the Camping World Bowl on December 27th or 28th facing either West Virginia or Iowa State. That's in Orlando. The Camping World world uh, in Orlando. Yeah. Really? Hmm. Uh, easy trip using, uh, you might not get there, but using uh, Frontier uh, or Allegiant. Like $50 tickets, you could be down there. Well, I'm hoping that uh, those airlines have something special for the holidays because I plan to take a trip and I saw the... the Flight prices for uh, non Allegiant or Frontier Airlines. Oh, they're yeah, up there. they're up there. Yeah. Uh, I also want to say so, Syracuse, both in the coaches poll and the AP poll, fell to number 19. Uh, over the weekend, Morrisville uh, played a bowl game. Morrisville uh, College football played in their bowl game, and uh, they ended up uh, they ended up losing, just falling short. But uh, Utica College won their first ever bowl game on Saturday. Yeah, huge win. It was a crazy game. It was a wild end, and we'll talk with the coach uh, coming up later this morning about uh, it. That was big. And Colgate ended up falling short. Did anybody see that game? I, I watched that whole game, too, and back and forth between the Syracuse game and the and the Colgate game. That was on CBS Sportsnet on Saturday. And, uh, Davey, that one was, uh, they. I mean, they really played with Army. It was close. Sure was. And they received the first round by in the FCS championship. Saw that, yeah. Really, really big. So, uh, uh, despite the loss, at, at least they made, it a, a, they made it a really good game, which is more than we can say for, uh, for Syracuse. Oof. Uh. Um, uh, what else? Oh, also, over the weekend, uh, the Comets had a, a rough one. They're just getting pelted. I don't they know want, lost their, what fourth, their fourth straight game. Just crushed. Uh, coming up, we'll talk to Tanya J. Powers on the migrant caravan, the latest. We're all talking about it. The president isn't talking much about it anymore. Uh, president Trump's interview with Fox News. Um, Chris Wallace on, uh, on Sunday. And John Decker will uh, talk about the, the fallout. There's a few things that came out of that. Ed Welch, this is Thanksgiving week. Hard to, are you eating Kentucky Fried Chicken? No, gosh, oh, no. Okay, uh, Ed Welch is uh, is on in a little while. Talk about the uh, traveling. Uh, this is one of the busiest, of course, times of the year to travel, and it's uh, there'll be a lot of people on the roads, and gas prices are are headed down. Uh, also, this morning we have a free money question of the day. We'll get into as we said. We'll talk to Blaise uh, Fagiano over at Utica College. He's the head football coach there, and that was a uh, that was a. A big win for Utica College. Today also we'll dig into the 22nd congressional race. Not sure yet, but they're telling, uh, they're saying that we'll be able to get results out of Oneida County. And by the way, Oneida County could wrap this race up, depending on the absentee ballots, could wrap it up for Anthony Brindisi. He's up by 3,100 plus votes, uh, which after the uh, the final count from election night, he was up twelve hundred uh, twelve hundred ninety three votes. Uh, he's pretty pretty much uh, uh, tripled that uh, at thirty one, just over thirty one hundred votes. So Oneida County still remains, and then there's a couple of other small, I think Tioga and another county uh, that is still to come with their ballots. But um, military still not counted. That I believe will begin most likely today. Um, but this could wrap it up. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, Will Oneida County that is a county that he just barely won. That was a really close one. Of course, he and she, both from Oneida County. Tanya J. Power standing by right now. The latest on the uh, on the caravan. Good morning, Tanya. Good Good morning. I'm glad I got to hear the last part of that segment. I didn't realize you, you all still had ballots that weren't counted yet either. Yes, we're Florida up here, it seems. <laughs> well, we don't have deadlines, so we'll probably <laughs> know by the time the next election rolls around. Well... So you know, wait, there's not like a there's not like a deadline like in Florida. Uh, well, well, there is a deadline. Yeah, we have oh, a deadline. But uh, oh yeah, it'll be I think. But the deadline is December fourteenth for everything oh, to be yeah. counted. So, okay. Uh, gotcha. but that's that's quite a ways. Uh, certainly quite a ways away. Yeah, but, we'll sure have a deadline. But sure. this is uh, this is the twenty second congressional seat, and it on election night. It well by the next day anyway, they counted all the election votes. And the challenger, the Democratic challenger, had a 1,293-vote lead. Ooh. So, and with about 17,000 absentee ballots that were out there. So, 
Wow, that's close. <laughs> yeah. So now, after the uh, after a, a good portion of them have been counted, um, uh, the challengers in the lead by thirty one hundred votes. So we might find out today or tomorrow, certainly before Thanksgiving, that uh, we might mm-hmm. be able to call a winner in this race. Wow, I, that's something that I will definitely keep an eye on. Let me know when, whenever, whenever things kind of smooth out and you find out who won. Yeah, and, and interestingly, this was a, a race where the president was here. Um, uh, yeah. Two or three Trumps were uh, were I in think a town. Third cousin Paul came Ryan. down. <laughs> yeah, the, the entire family been here. It was a big Multiple dinner. Multiple Trumps have visited. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So the president not talking a lot about the caravan. What's going on? And some of them have have are pretty close, right? Well, yeah. There's been protests now in Tijuana. Um, that happened probably within, I guess, the last maybe twelve hours. Definitely within the last day. And there were uh, folks in Tijuana, Mexico, who have protested the, mi- the arrival of the migrants. Uh, they were protesting and chanting, out, out. Um, mm-hmm. Some of them even told reporters that were covering this that, you know, it sounded like, you know, as they put it, it sounded like Trump's America, honestly, because, you know, the mayor of Tijuana has said, no, you know, go back. You know, we don't, yeah, yeah. We don't have room for you here. We, we don't, you know. Um, you know, it, it has definitely echoed some of the things that, you know, you're hearing from the White House. They refer to it as an invasion. Uh, I've seen numbers up to 10,000. Wow. I'm not sure. It, it's kind of difficult to get a handle on it, obviously. Now, some of them have diverted and gone to uh, a different uh, place to, to try and, you know, seek asylum uh, at a different border crossing. Um, but. They're, you know, they're in Tijuana, and a lot of people are unhappy. I know a couple of the news stories that I read that were, you know, concerned by people that, you know, obviously of, of, uh, you know, too many folks taking yeah, up government yeah. resources. Their tax money was going to go to pay for this. Um, you know, they're worried about crime. They're worried about overcrowding. Um, some of them are concerned because while they live in Tijuana, they may work in California. Right. That and is one they're of the, uh, concerned yeah. that that border crossing is going to get difficult to go through for them to even get to work. Uh, it is. I have a, a friend in San Diego who's uh, every time anybody, any friends go out to visit him, it's always uh, on the list. It's a trip to yeah. Tijuana. Um, yeah. And so there's a, there's a big tourism market there, but also, mm-hmm. as you say, people working uh, on one side or the other of the, of the border. So uh, yeah. that yeah. Could, so, could slow yeah, things down. They're obviously concerned, but that's that was the protest, the big story of the protest, where they were basically telling them to go back to their to go back to their country. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Um, they certainly have uh, these. Uh, this portion of the caravan arrived much earlier than anybody thought would happen. Uh, we initially thought it wouldn't happen until after Christmas or maybe even after New Year's. That's yes, you're right, and yeah. I, I mean I, I don't know, but they, maybe they had better transportation. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Uh, most of this, I think, a lot of them were done was done by foot. Got it. From what we've what we've got, and, um, some you know managed to to get a ride here and there, but um, and and then many of them have, have already turned back. Um, you know, there's been I'm seeing reports of about eighteen hundred to two thousand that turned back and decided not to not to make the trip not all the way it. up. Yeah. All right, Tiny, thanks so much, Tiny J mm-hmm. Powers. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, did you? And we, I know you talked about this in sports. The um, the quarterback for the Redskins, yeah, tough, Alex tough Smith, loss for them. Uh, out for the season after suffering a broken leg. He broke both bones. Uh, talk about tough to watch and painful. Broke both bones in his lower right leg when he was sacked in the second half by oh. Kareem Jackson and J.J. Watt of the Texans. Thirty three years to the day since Joe Theismann suffered the exact same career ending injury while playing for the Redskins when he was tackled by Lawrence Taylor. Career ending? And it was to, it was to the day. Even the final score was the same. Theismann tweeted about the coincidence. Smith is 34, two years younger than Theismann was at the time, so he could come back. Here are the commentators and Gruden as well uh, talking. Here we go. I know it was uh, very painful for him and, and uh, you know heartbreaking for a lot of people. You know, he's a great guy and a hard worker and uh, one of the key leaders on this football team. So these things happen in pro football, unfortunately. Just hate to see him happen to a guy like Alex. But uh, knowing the type of guy he is, I think he'll bounce back. Well, for Theismann, uh, yeah. it ended his uh, ended his career. Crazy. The get- score was the same. It was on the exact same day, right down to the day, and the same type of, uh, of 
broken leg injury. And I guess I knew Theismann's was career-ending, but, th- you know, talk about bad luck for Alex Smith. So this is a little quick recap of his journey. He played for San Francisco, got a concussion, lost his job to Colin Kaepernick, got traded to Kansas City, had a good run, but never really went anywhere, got traded. Finally, he thought maybe the Redskins could win this division, finally, after a long time not doing that, and yep. this happens, which makes Terrible. it interesting for that division because the, the Super Bowl defending champion Eagles struggling, but still in the hunt. The Giants now Giants could won, make a run uh, for they've, it. They've, they're predicting they're going to win out. Um, we'll see. They, yeah. uh, that, that was we will see. A good finish to that game for the Giants. Mickey Mouse turned 90 years old yesterday. Here are some facts. Mickey is happily married to Minnie. Did you know that? Yeah. They, they debuted together on Steamboat Willie in 1928. <laughs> Mickey didn't say his first words until his ninth movie, which was The Carnival Kid in 1929. And his first words were hot dog. He is frequently a write-in on election ballots. And I'm assuming even in our races here uh, in this past election, a few people wrote in Mickey Mouse. Mm-hmm. It uh, seems to be kind of a tradition for some people. That's the first words spoken Especially by after being married Mickey, as long as you Mickey Mouse. They're happily married. It's hard to believe. Hard to believe. Standing by on the line right now is Chief Meteorologist at Eyewitness News, Rachel Witter. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning. All right. So uh, winter's over, right? Uh, no. Not so much. Uh, actually, um, this week looks like it's going to be a little chilly, right? Frigid, almost, oh, yeah. I would go with. Um, today, we're actually pretty quiet, so it's a nice break in the um, in the snow. We didn't get much accumulation last night, but the snow showers really did stick with us. So today, we're just cloudy and in the 30s. Not too bad. Tomorrow, we may pick up some additional accumulation, but... Not really much. Those are just going to be kind of snow showery conditions. So we'll see on and off snow Tuesday into Wednesday. But the bottom falls out on Thanksgiving. We're talking probably high temperatures in the teens Mm. and low temperatures in the single digits. Wow. So that's what we have to look forward to. Now, that does seem a little early for such cold weather, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. This is, um, it's like a super deep cold air mass that's just going to sit over top of us really for just about 48 hours Fridays on the cold side of things too. Not quite as cold, but I think we'll probably stay in the lower 20s. Um, This is more typical for January, maybe early February. So this is quite early for that. Uh, And it's funny how, as you said, this is just going to uh, basically turn. uh, It's a pattern that is uh, winter-like and boy, didn't it? I mean, you know, we were looking at temperatures in the uh, in the 40s. In some cases, a week ago, we were up into the 50s, and and yeah. now it is it is clearly winter time. It seems. Yeah, we're we're stuck here for a while. I think. Yeah. All right, Rachel. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Rachel Witter, Chief Meteorologist at Eyewitness News, Fox News reporter John Decker on the uh, the president's interview with Chris Wallace yes, yesterday. Did you see that or hear that? Um, no, I did not. I did. There's not. some interesting. Uh, there are some interesting stuff in it, and it, and it seemed to get a little uh, a little heated at times between Wallace and the uh, and the president. Yeah, well, Wallace calls it like it is. I'm sure he the does. president didn't love that. He does. And he even said, you know, uh, when I talk about fake news, I'm not... And, and Wallace was trying to say, listen, when you, when, you, when you say the media is the enemy of the people, that is, that is offensive not just to CNN, but it's offensive to all of us. That is attacking all of us. We are united. And he really couldn't get it in because the president kind of kept talking over him. <laughs> but he's saying, I didn't say the media. I said fake news, which is most of the media. Um, not you, except sometimes, is what he said about Wallace. And then Wallace <laughs> said, well, really, it's more like um, well, things that you don't agree with. It's not necessarily fake. No, it's fake news. Just ask. A lot of people know that it's fake news. So we'll talk to John Decker about that. Coming up also, the president uh, was talking about raking, uh, how, how to prevent the, the forest fires in California, and the president said that it's because there's a lack of raking. And here's some audio. I was watching the firemen the other day, and they were raking areas. They were raking areas where the fire was right over there, and they're raking trees, little trees like this that are nut trees, little bushes, that you could see are totally dry. Weeds. And they're raking them. They're on fire. That should have been all raked out. What about the argument? You wouldn't have the fire. You look at other countries where they do it differently and and it's a whole different story i was with the president of finland and he said we have uh, 
are much different. We're a forest nation. He called it a forest nation. And they spend a lot of time on raking and cleaning and doing things, and they don't have any problem. The uh, problem is the uh, the Finnish president does not remember telling the president that. In an interview over the weekend, said, I don't remember saying that. Um, and, of course, those in Finland on Twitter, uh, Twitter lit up for uh, for the for the Finns as they were uh, ripping on the uh, the president and his reeking comment. Uh, either way, though, Finland is, uh, I believe it's like, uh, I don't know, 80 percent forest or something. It's, oh, wow. That much. It's, uh, uh, and, you know. So we probably could learn from them, but I'm not sure raking will be it, uh, at least according to the, the president of Finland. John Decker standing by right now. That was a part of the interview with Chris Wallace yesterday. John, good morning. Hey, good morning to you. How are you doing today? Wonderful. We're uh, ready to go on a, on, a, on a holiday week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to like that. Hopefully yeah. you have uh, some of the days off this week, uh, Thursday, maybe Friday off as well. I uh, I would say you're absolutely correct. Looking forward to it. Oh. So. You're a lucky, lucky man, lucky, lucky man. Yeah, well, anyway, it was a very uh, a good interview that Chris Wallace did uh, on Fox News Sunday. I saw Chris when he was here at the White House uh, taping that interview on Friday, and, of course, it ran on Fox News Sunday yesterday. And uh, the president covered a lot of ground, talking about uh, the murder of Saudi journalist Gamal Khashoggi and a CIA report uh, which seems to indicate, in fact, they've concluded with high confidence that the crown prince of Saudi Arabia authorized that killing, the president really reluctant to accept that report based upon what he sold Chris Wallace on Sunday. And he also said he doesn't want to hear the tape uh, that was provided to the U.S. He says he's been fully briefed on what was on that recording. Yeah, so he said it was, uh, was one, he, one element. Yep. He said it was too, um, too violent. He didn't need to hear it. He'd been briefed on it. That's right. Yeah, interesting. That, they, uh, yeah, well, it, it, it is. And, you know, the president also touched on the Mueller investigation. Uh, that's what Chris Wallace asked about. Uh, no indication, by the way, that uh, Robert Mueller is set to wrap up that investigation anytime soon, despite some reports which uh, indicate just that. We've seen these reports before, uh, but we also saw a report last Monday, for instance, on CBS that Mueller was ready to issue some new indictments, and that never happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about, uh, I know they, they they did get into Jim Acosta and CNN and the uh the media being the enemy of the uh, of the nation, enemy of the people, um, and it did seem that things got a little bit heated between uh, the president and, and Chris Wallace. Well, that's when uh, the uh, Chris Wallace brought up the former uh, Navy admiral, uh, Navy SEAL uh, Admiral McRaven, who oversaw and organized and was responsible for the raid on Pakistan that killed Osama bin Laden. Uh, and Admiral McRaven recently has spoken about how it, it troubles him when the, this president speaks about how the media, the press, uh, is the enemy of the people. And the president went after McRaven, uh, accused him of supporting Hillary Clinton in the last presidential election. And McRaven actually went out on the record immediately afterwards and said he did not support Hillary Clinton yeah. in the 2016 election. And McRaven, very well respected, uh, he's now retired, but very well respected military man from both parties, and, you know, I think that the president, you know, I mean, look, you know, when you speak about enemy of the people, I can think about al-Qaeda, right? Mm, yeah, an enemy yeah. of the people. That's a true enemy of the American people. Uh, John, I, I, I found it to I didn't know, I found it to be funny, yet um, I I don't know that I should be feeling it, that it, it's funny when we're watching an interview with the president, but uh, when, when talking, I think Chris Wallace came back and said, well, they did. They were able to capture uh, Osama bin Laden. And the president said, yeah, but it could have been earlier. I mean, think about how long it took. <laughs> it just it, it, it was somewhat surreal. Uh, well, there were uh, some reports that uh, there was an opportunity to get Osama bin Laden uh, during George W. Bush's time in office. Uh, but look, you know, what's done is done. And, and yeah. thankfully, uh, you know, that, that raid was successful and he was killed. And uh, it was, you know, it, look, they, it, it was so successful and so impressive. They made it into a movie, right? I mean, right, right. I, I don't know how you criticize it in any way. Yeah. Uh, either way, Chris Wallace does. Uh, I think he gives a, a, a great interview. And if you ever feel like you're you're he's he's extremely. I, I believe fair, and he kind of hits you from from both sides, no matter what political party you're from. I, I think he he gives a very fair and balanced interview. 
I, I agree with you completely. I, I teach a class at Georgetown, a journalism class, and, and I tell those students I teach year after year, I say, you want to see a good interviewer, look at Chris Wallace. He's, he's just, you know, to me, the, the best there is out there. His father was great, uh, Mike Wallace, when he was, of course, with 60 Minutes. Yep. And uh, Chris is, uh, is following through and, and, you know, carrying that baton. All right, uh, John, we appreciate the update. Thanks so much, and you have a great Thanks Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving have holiday. Have a great Thanksgiving week. Okay. Absolutely. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Uh, John Decker from Fox News. Uh, here's a little of the and, – and, you know, the other thing is they'll rip on the president for, for everything, right, no matter what. And sometimes people slip up, and in this case it was clearly a slip-up in uh, referencing uh, the, the fires, the wildfires in uh, California. As big as they look on the tube – you don't see what's going on until you come here. And what we saw at Pleasure, what a name right now. But when, what we just saw, we just left Pleasure. Paradise. Uh, yeah. par- it's Paradise. Uh. <laughs> and what we just saw at, at Paradise is just, uh, you know, it's just not acceptable. I, equivalent, uh, 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 I feel that Pleasure, Paradise, they do go hand in hand. Sure. They're equivalent, I believe. Uh, and then the president being uh, criticized for making a joke, um, a sexual joke, about uh, former and the late uh, Antonin Scalia of, of the uh, Supreme Court. Here's what um, was said. Joining us for this ceremony is his wife, Maureen, who's become a, a great friend of my family, myself, and their nine children, Anne, Jean, John. Catherine, Mary Claire, Paul, Matthew, Christopher, and Meg. You were very busy. Wow. Wow. I always knew I liked him. Uh, um, inappropriate? I don't know. Right? I mean, how bad was that? Andrew, yeah, that's not bad. Is anyone, but is you're anyone, high-fiving him over that. That's no, a good I'm not. joke. I'm just, you know, I'm not surprised. That's a lot of kids, though. I mean, after reading that, it's, I would, there's at least a Brady Bunch joke there somewhere, except they were always together, I think. so. Uh, and a 24-year-old guy in Pensacola turned himself... Uh, I'm down with the president. I have no more presidential stuff. A 24-year-old guy in Pensacola turned himself in at a police station the other day after downloading child porn. Uh, Here's a cop. Have you ever heard of such a thing? So he must have felt guilty trying to stop himself but couldn't. Um, This is weird. And then turned himself in. Here's the cop talking about how rare it is to see someone turn themselves in for child pornography. He says he got it off of the the web. So um, where exactly he went, we don't know. Uh, That's still being looked at. And why he turned himself in, again, we we don't know. That's that's odd. Um, But uh, uh, maybe he was looking for help. But that's being looked at. Almost as if he could not help himself, and he felt guilty, and he turned himself in. Crazy. Uh, Manasseh, you got to be happy this morning as the Giants have won two games in a row. For the first time since December of 2016. How about that? Big. Wow. And can we just uh, briefly, once again, touch on the debacle in New York City for the Syracuse Orange, both basketball and football? Holy cow. Never expected a uh, basketball team to lose the way they did. They got crushed on Friday. And then, uh, and then that, that beating that uh, the football team took on, uh, on Saturday uh, in New York City against Notre Dame. So it was obviously tough to lose Dungy so early, and DeVito didn't have a great game. Only threw for 100 yards for the game. He was in for three quarters. Yeah. I was so upset, though. On Syracuse's schedule, it said versus, which means a home game. I did not know that Notre Dame was going to be positioned as the home team in that game. They had pinstripes on their shoulders. Mm-hmm. Their names were in both end zones. Well, part of did it was that? because part yeah, of it was because saw that, because I mean... they gave up a home game. So Notre Dame gave up their home game to play at Yankee Stadium, which is why it was their home game. I just think it's ridiculous. And, and Syracuse was like, "This is an awesome opportunity to play uh, with the big boys." I guess until so. the game, you know. Got going, then you realized. Yeah, you know, a, we we're quickly well, down. Well, it just shows what, how good 14, Notre Dame is. Fourteen nothing. We're well, they're they're undefeated, right? We we're down fourteen nothing uh, pretty early. Yeah, there's a clear uh, step up, you know, to another level when you're talking top ten football, top five football. But I, I do think they were they were the. I felt they could have gotten. They seemed to be getting back into it uh, uh, with Dungey. 
But once Dungy went out, there was nothing. It's yeah. almost like the. It's almost like everybody lost any bit of confidence they might have been. They might have had going in, and and it was just a, a pouncing. Uh, it was really so. Really plus rough. for Devito, I know he filled in a couple times. He filled in the one game where he was just throwing bombs down the field. Yeah, he looked he looked but awesome the last time he filled in. National stage, NBC, Yankee Stadium, Notre Dame's your opponent. I mean, there's that was pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, and you want to hear what it sounds like when a race car goes airborne at 171 miles per hour? Uh, it happened at the, uh, what is it, the, was this a, is this a NASCAR, the Grand Prix NASCAR? Uh, it was a German girl, 17-year-old yeah. German girl na- named Sophia Flursch. Any idea, Davey? You're a race car guy. Uh, anyway, I saw this report, and everybody was talking about it. She's 17 years old. How's she driving a car at, at 171 miles an hour? In a, That's wild. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she lost control going into a turn, flew in the air, crashed into a bunker for photographers. She needed surgery for a fractured spine, but when you watch the video, it's amazing she's still alive. This is what it sounded like. 17 years old, going 171 miles an hour. New York Assembly in the 121st District now has a winner. That's the uh, a race everybody was keeping an eye on. And how about Bill McGee, who's been there since the dinosaurs tra- trolled the earth? Yeah. Um, Bill McGee has lost, and he's done. Yeah. Uh, he he was beaten by, and we got to try to get this uh, this guy on here, Andrew. We've had McGee John on. John Salka, yeah. Uh, John Salka, who is the... Um, third time challenger. Yeah. Th- three, third time is the charm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's also the high, highway, highway supervisor or something in uh, in Brookfield. Um, so uh, he, that was very, very close. There was 35, there were 3,500 absentee ballots to count. And after it's all said and done, it basically went the way of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the election night. Followed the, pretty much the same pace. Uh, he maintained a lead of 508 votes after all the absentee and affidavit ballots were counted in Madison and Otsego counties. Oneida County has not completed yet, so a portion of that district is in Oneida County. They've not com- completed their, their counting. However, there were only 150 absentee ballots in Oneida County. So they've been able to, to declare Salka uh, the winner. Now, he and is a Republican. He is a Republican. And, and uh, when you think about it, McGee, uh, being a Democrat, was big when it came uh, big in, in farming. Mm-hmm. Very, very big in in. in Farming communities, um, and has uh, as a Democrat, it, it's kind of rare in that part of the uh, of the state to uh, to be someone. But year after year, term after term, he would win. I think he'd he'd been there since 1990 in the assembly. Wow. He's now 79 years old. Incredible. The last time we had him on the on the air, um, he's not. He was not. Bill McGee was never much of a talker. It was That's a very true. quiet interview. Mm. Yes. So we'll see what John... By the way, Salka was the highway superintendent um, in... Uh, town supervisor, I'm sorry, in Madison County. Um, and he's from Brookfield. So that's pretty. Uh, that's a, a pretty big victory. And a big victory for the Republicans in the Assembly. Now, he, now that seat, you can all be happy. You're now all in the minority. Yeah. Yep. So... And a, and a big minority. I can't believe how badly... Uh, the the Senate lost their majority. Yeah, it's by like uh, some. There might only be like twenty one or twenty two Republicans in the uh, in the Senate. You're kidding? Yeah, that it's, much? it's look up the numbers. Thirty seats they lost. I believe so. It was it was a shellacking. Oh my goodness! And they have a uh, the Democrats now have a very strong majority in the uh, in the New York State Senate. Something that is, boy, it's tough because you think about all of the clout that uh, that Griffo had gained, all the ability to drive the agenda. When Cuomo was pushing something down, the, the Republicans always could at least force some sort of a debate, and that is gone. I'm telling you, you're going to see, this is the big story that, that really hasn't been talked about a lot. You're going to see a lot of change in New York this coming year with this type of a majority that they have, the Democrats, both the Assembly and in the Senate. Pretty crazy. Got a break. Ed Welch is from AAA and also host of WIMBX's Auto Talk on the line right now. Lower gas prices, um, does that mean a higher frequency on the highways? 
Oh, Bill, that's part of the story. Uh, consumers have a lot to be thankful for this holiday season. Higher wages, more disposable income, and rising levels of household wealth. These are all things, uh, in addition to the lower gas prices, that's really translating into a lot more travelers uh, kicking off the holiday season. It's been a big positive year for the travel industry. Yeah. Um, and Manassi, your, your question is, do people really, when gas prices are higher, does sure. it does it decrease uh, does it decrease the the amount of people that travel during the holidays? Um, not generally, but it, it depends on when it happens. A, a good example is if if you look at 2013 or 2014, or you go back to when we're 2008 when we're paying over four dollars a gallon. Mm. Um, that that depressed travel because it's the cumulative effect. You know, if gas went up 20 cents a gallon tomorrow, for example, no one's going to cancel their Thanksgiving trip. Right. They're going to grouse about it, but they're not going to cancel it. It's it's that large amount of extra money week after week, day after day that you put in the gas tank that has a cumulative effect over time. Uh, this year, of course, we've seen the prices, you know, kind of be moderated. Last year, they went up quite a bit. We're still paying about 20 cents more a gallon, though, than we were last year at this time. Yeah. And I see a couple of places who are <clears throat> creeping back toward the uh, 260s. I actually saw my favorite station go down to 271 this weekend. So let me ask you this. For the next six weeks approximately, we're going to see a slight decline, 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 maybe a nickel, a dime, hopefully more. And then once we turn into 2019, they start uh, trickling upward again, don't they? Because we're approaching well, that's, summer. That's a, that's a good prognostication because that's liable to be exactly what happens. Uh, you know, what we're seeing today is two things. Number one is is the lower demand right now. It's, it's seasonal. This is the time of year where demand goes down. We're making winter gas, which is cheaper per gallon to make than summer gas. Uh, but more importantly, there's a glut of oil on the market at the moment. Um, the administration, uh, I don't want to use the word hoodwinked, but that might be a good word. Um, back a few weeks back or a few months back, we had those embargoes placed on the Iranians. And uh, everyone thought that that would squeeze supply in the marketplace to keep the prices high. And, of course, uh, the president asked the Saudis and others to increase production. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons why the gas prices stayed higher in late September and early October than normally than we would see the drop a lot faster than we did. Uh, then what happened, of course, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, he gave a bunch of countries waivers uh, on that gas for the next six months. And, of course, the market, the gasoline market, or I should say the oil market, had a, about a 20% drop in the cost of crude uh, because they realized that, wait a minute, we're not going to have a supply problem, and we've made too much too much oil. We've pumped too much out of the ground. Yeah. Um, over the weekend, OPEC has talked about um, cutting their, their, their uh, per, you know, production on a daily basis. They're meeting on December 5th. That's going to be a big day to pay attention to. But uh, I believe uh, right through January – We'll probably continue to see prices. We'll don't get down to the two sixties. I think uh, maybe a two fifties in a few places, uh, but then they'll they're going to start to go the other way. I think as soon as spring approaches. So you're right about that, Jeff. I, I was um, I believe we're coming up on the busiest travel day of the year, right? And I and we we we, we are Bill yeah. and uh, about fifty four point three million of us are going to go out this weekend or this holiday. And you know I want to point out that the biggest growth has been by air. Mm, yeah. uh, and I, I, th- I think Andrew talked earlier about uh, maybe taking a trip. Um, one of the things that's interesting is we've been tracking airline prices uh, for the past few months, and what we've recognized was we've looked at the fares, and they've averaged since September 23rd through October 25th, and we're looking at people booking their Thanksgiving uh, air travel. The average was about $478 round trip. Uh, what's interesting, if, if you leave on Monday – the average is about 465. On Tuesday, it's 509. Wednesday, it's 507. But if you actually had the temerity to leave on Thanksgiving Day, that's when the that's when yep. you'll find the lightest crowds and the mm. cheapest airfares. If you wanted to wait that long, if you're that much of a procrastinator, but uh, of course, you know weather delays, uh, you could end yeah, up missing Thanksgiving yep. dinner. Especially with some of these budget airlines, I swear to God, you're dealing with the delays. I mean, if, hey, you're flying for 57 dollars. Shut yeah, up. I mean, it's, it's, and, it's, sit in the airport and you, you enjoy yourself. You get what yourself. you pay for. Yeah, you're right. And I, I said to my wife the last time we did fly, she's, um, uh, we had come back from, from Denver, and we were delayed all day long. It was, it was terrible. But by the time we got done buying food and sitting in that airport all day long, I swear to God, it completely raised it. We'd have been, we'd have been better off spending 300 on the ticket. 
Um, yeah, I think I think the the food might be cheaper at Yankee Stadium I, than some of the airports. You are you are correct. <laughs> uh, and one more, uh, I, I read that that don't when it comes to travel, when it comes to grocery stores, when it comes to people think they just assume that it's going to be so busy on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, that sometimes it's not. Is there any truth to to that when it comes to travel? Actually, tomorrow, Bill, is the busiest That's day. That's what it said. Yeah. Tuesday is the busiest day, and when we look at traffic, uh, we've we've put together a list of delays that I call the traffic misery index. And the worst time to hit the roads near the largest cities, New York City, for example, is the second most traveled destination in the country on Thanksgiving holiday. Mm-hmm. Orlando is the first. But if you look around the Washington area, or, or pardon me, the New York area, the worst time to be on the road near New York would be Tuesday between six and eight p.m. Now, now, traffic's bad. We would all agree with that. If you take the normal horrible traffic, it times it by 3.5. In other words, 3.5. Wow. Wow. That's what the delays you're going to see. That's a delay multiplier for tomorrow. Uh, so actually, Tuesday's the worst day. Tuesday's also the worst day for Washington, D.C. area. Mm-hmm. It's 2.5. And the Boston area is also about 3.5, like New York. But again, the, the worst place, of course, I believe is is New York. And uh, that multiplier, that I call it the traffic misery index. Um, yeah, tomorrow's the day; it's the worst. Yep. Uh, the best day to travel actually is Thursday. Uh, obviously, weather, things like that. You don't want to miss dinner, but that's the lightest travel day is actually Thursday. Pretty wild. And uh, nice job over the weekend, by the way, uh, out there raising uh, canned goods and uh, and food for the Central New York Food Bank. Uh, yeah, we had a, we had a great time there, and. Uh, People are very generous. They stop by to see us. And uh, obviously, it's a very generous community. Yep. Uh, the food bank does a remarkable job. Uh, Ed Welch, as always, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks, guys. Right. And uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Safe you Thanksgiving. Too. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, you too. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of a safe Thanksgiving, um, is it safe to sit down at the dinner table and start talking politics? Oh, heck no. Uh, we have uh, someone, an expert on that will explain how you can manage your way through Thanksgiving and uh, this is all post-midterms, right? All post-President Trump. Can you get through it? We'll uh, get Stephanie Michelle as a relationship communication specialist. Do you recommend, Stephanie, against talking politics at the dinner table? <laughs> hmm. I actually do this year. <laughs> this yeah. year, huh? I actually do. Yeah. I think a, a good place to start, you know, I, I, I know at this point everybody's feeling some sort of social and political outrage. We all have it. It doesn't matter which side it's on. So I really want to see families take back their Thanksgiving dinner and really have a meaningful gathering. Yeah. So that means being just a little bit more intentional than you have in the years past, um, enlisting people in the family that are natural <laughs> mentors that can really lead us into doing something new. So, you know, I'm suggesting printing out some questions, <laughs> putting them mm. in a bowl. Like there's literally thousands of quest- topics we can talk about. Outside of politics. Boy, these potatoes are good. I like yeah. these. Where'd you, where'd, you, where'd you plant these potatoes? Uh, these In are, Idaho. Oh, yeah. they went blue. Idaho. Oh, that's a bunch of different I, I can tell the difference between Idaho. I can. I really can. Um, yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, and it's really been since the, 2000, the, the race in 2016, right? I mean, people have been yeah. so heated yeah. and in opposition, it seems. Yeah, yeah it has. And it, it feels like it's rising and you know we're all talking about this i mean we're all having this conversation about how do we get together and really have a more meaningful interaction with each other so i think really what's what's it's coming down to is we're out of practice in this type of communication you know we we see debating and really antagonistic forms of communication all the time and that's what we're doing when we're together so we really have to back out of that go hey we need a little practice of just it's almost distraction you know to See that we can connect again and and you know it can be as simple as like starting that dinner with a round of everybody sharing what they're grateful for and then leading each other into compliments let's like see mm. each other you know let's tell aunt betty her her jewelry's looking you know on spot today you know let's let's really you know pull out everything that we can in this experience just to counteract everything else that we're feeling. And my Thanksgiving dinner be like, Tina, you look beautiful today. What do you mean by that? <laughs> what, what are you saying? <laughs> you piece of garbage. You creep. <laughs> <laughs> you trying yeah, to hit on her? Yeah, right. You trying to hit on hey, her? That's you hitting on my wife. You big dummy. 
Um, <laughs> Fred Fox is coming. <laughs> Fred Fox to be cute. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I'm joining you. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, I think in that case, no. I, you know, uh, we, we might have to set a political swear jar on the table and make mm. the stakes really high. That anytime you know something unfavorable about politics comes up, my mother has to put five dollars in that jar. That's, you know, a good, let's, that's, let's, that's a good strategy. My mother's uh, strategy is. We only text at the table, okay? <laughs> There'll be no talking. We only text. Until someone throws their phone. Please right. pass the potatoes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Boy, it is crazy, right? Did you have... Uh, well, no, because I had I apologized because she was talking about having a mentor to try to help the good things, but I had laughed prematurely thinking she was going to say, you know, pick a side, everybody that's going to start trouble ahead of time and give them a real talking to. Maybe don't invite them. Well, that's... Uh, sometimes it's not possible, right? You got to invite everybody, yeah. right? You can't just like leave your out your. Hey, listen, Uncle Jerry. None of yeah. that crap this year, okay? All right. Do you have a website <laughs> people can go to or something that they can yes, uh, I, study up I on do. this? I do. It's, it's stephaniemichelle dot com, and I posted a hundred questions that we could share with each other outside of politics to help everybody out. Oh, I like that. That's All great. Right. And again, the website is stephaniemichelle dot com. M i c h e l e, right? Yes, or okay. you can find me on social media. Relate with cool. stuff. All right. Well, good luck and have a wonderful holiday. Okay. You too. All right. Thanks. You know, I would say my technique is if you get like a Trump supporter and a non-Trump supporter, whatever side it's on, whichever one you'd like to cozy up to better. When the explosion happens at the table or in front of the football screen, you you kind of go and you pull them off to the side. Let's say it's somebody who doesn't like Trump, and and there's a little blow up, and you you, you say. Uncle John, yeah, I agree with you, man. That Trump is nuts. But but I don't want to say anything. I just want you to know I'm in your corner, right? So then he feels a little bit more secure. Right. He's not fighting the whole right. table. I like that. I do and like then, that. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets mad and throws milk. stuff. And I, uh, I, I, whoever would have thought over. that uh, that that Claudia Tenney would be the great peacemaker of all, right? Who would because and my we I have an uncle that will come and he's a very 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 like. Ten times bigger than the biggest Trump fan. Ten times more than Zeka. Ten times more than Zeka. Like really? you can't say anything, and it's like, yeah, I listen to you on the radio. I hear that you, you're nothing but a Trump hater. That's all you. And then it gets into the. And then I say, Claudia Tenney. Well, there's something we can agree on. I can't stand that <laughs> one. So in my house, in my house. With my the great uniter. with Uncle Bob, Claudia is the great yeah. unifier. Brings everyone together. Oh boy! Seven thirty. Uh, we have. A... <laughs> I don't have Uncle Bob. Happy just, Thanksgiving. It's a joke. It's a joke. For God's sakes, take a joke. Don't take things so personally. Tawny is standing by right now, and Skyler. Hello, Tawny. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. Are you ready to go? This is Thanksgiving. I am ready. Well, you've really increased your listenership it's very hard to get through now compared to a couple years ago and that stinks because i like to keep the old small crowd uh i work so hard to keep it that way and somehow no that's uh, okay that means your 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 listenership is over and above well thank you for that tony i really appreciate that we appreciate you listening well you're in and let's make this a win here so bike is money and uh, let's give it away are you ready i'm ready all right you're gonna have exactly seven seconds of course you know the deal yeah. And here, I've lost my uh, screen. Here is the question. All right, it happened yesterday. Mickey Mouse turned 90 years old. Did you know that Mickey Mouse was silent in his first eight movies? He did not speak until his ninth movie when he said these words. Ready, go. Hot dog. Is it hot dog? She was listening this morning, and she's absolutely right. Winning, it's winning. Hot. Everybody is awaiting Mickey Mouse's first words. The what first will words they be? For hot dog. All right, Tawny, congratulations. You win $100 from the Hillbuckle Law Firm. Nice Thank job. Thank you very much. All right, sit nice tight. Nice job. Davey's going to hook you up, all right? Okay, all thanks. Right, thanks so much. want to remind everybody else you can submit the correct answer, which today was hot dog, through our app, yeah. the free WIBX 950 app. Left hand side, there's a drop down. Click contact us, send us an email. Just submit hot dog, and you have a chance to get a full free brake job from Mariska and Garage and Tire over on Champion. You have Ave. to uh, actually submit hot dog. Hot dog. I can hot do dog. It right yeah, there you go. Then the dog, Pluto. Yeah, there you go. Uh, hot dog. So uh, I'll tell you this brief uh, story from over the weekend, and then uh, the, there's a new prank out there. You know, they see the kids, they'll take the water bottle and they flip the water bottle over? Yeah. Really yeah. kind of cool how they do that. Um, but-
But I think it's kind of easy. I saw there's one commercial on TV where a baby did it. Yeah, well, it's, it's like a little be, toddler. You, sh- you sh- fill it up to a certain point. It's and it's how much water that way. you put in? Yeah, that's yeah, the key. Yeah. But there's a new one out there, and it's a new prank, and it's perfect for the holidays. I'll explain what that is. Uh, perfect for <laughs> this week, by the way. I'll explain what it is. I'll play you some audio on it. But um, so Sunday morning, I came out of the. Uh, it was be Saturday morning. I came out of the house, and I looked, and I'm like, Al, my, my wife, why did you park your car? almost in the road. Mm-hmm. And if you looked out in our driveway, the car, which our, our driveway, this will give it away, uh, is on a little bit of, a, of an incline. Yeah. And the vehicle, her vehicle, sitting out, the bumper was in the, in the street. It, her car, overnight, uh, we thought maybe somebody, did somebody push it? Did somebody hit the car? So we're out looking at the car in the whole nine yards. The car literally, because of the ice, slid out of the driveway and almost into the um, – it was ice, that, it was a chunk of ice that actually blocked it from going right into the street. Or into your neighbor across the street's Correct. front door. Yeah. Yeah. Did she not put it in park? It was in park. It slid oh on my. ice. Slid. And, and meanwhile, it wasn't even that ice. It must have gotten icy. I don't know. <clears throat> or was there water underneath the – did she park in water when she parked? Maybe yeah, like a we puddle? Yeah, we were shoveling. And getting that, bits. that must be what happened. Wow. Actually, I went back on the cameras because we have security cameras. And for some reason, it was blacked out for about an hour and a half. I don't know why. But I saw it at like 2 in the morning, and the car was here. And then like 4 o'clock in the morning, it was out almost and into there's the a, street. There was, there was a black space in between the video footage. There was a, there was, there was, it did not record during that time. I'm telling you, there's somebody who's messing with that. You think somebody did did, did something? There's no way. I mean, it's just coincidence that when the car shifted, there was no video footage of it? I know if somebody walks up to our house. I know if somebody leaves the house. I know no one left. No one came in. At one point, I'm saying to her, I think you slept walk. You were sleepwalking. And you, and you got up in the middle of the night and you went out and you moved your car. (laughs) Into the street. I, why in the hell would you do that? I don't know. It's not safe in the driveway. Wow. I got to move it to the road. <clears throat> I don't trust him. <laughs> he comes out of that garage. Don't you park in the garage now? Um, I what we do is I park in the garage and then I put her car in the garage because we can't fit all the cars in the garage. So I'll, when I leave in the morning, I drive hers in because we don't like to shovel or anything like that. We just watch the, the snow melt off the. <laughs> It melts off the car. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I melted your car off. <clears throat> That's how we do it. Uh, so the new prank out there is for Thanksgiving week. Moving and people's cars, I guess. It no. is a um, honest to God. I I'm I was hoping that it was on camera because we would have seen exactly what happened. But why is it blacked out during that? It does make you kind of wonder, do, doesn't do, it? Do, 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 do. Makes you kind of wonder. Yeah. There's a new Thanksgiving prank where you ask your mom how long to cook a 25 pound turkey in the microwave. <laughs> I think I saw and, this. and it has gone viral. You know the reaction you're going to get, right? Here we go. Are you guys out of your f-ing mind? You cannot microwave a 25 pound turkey. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, we can. No, you can't. How big is that turkey? It fits in your microwave? Yeah, it, we can squish it in there. No, it won't work. I'm telling you right now. I'm excellent at turkey. You cannot freaking microwave a turkey, it will not work. Work. Why not? What happened? I, well, I thought we could. We did everything else in there. No. You guys, you put it in a freaking pan. You take out the guts. You put butter on it, salt and pepper, maybe some paprika. You put water at the bottom of the pan. You put it in the oven. And if you don't have stuffing in it, which is probably what you're not going to have, it's 20 minutes a pound. I think we're just going to turn off this spinner thing in the microwave so that it doesn't oh like ruin God, it. and just. Guys, guys it will take you 50 hours to do that <laughs> anyway try that one if you'd like uh, if you're not going to be home for the holidays call your mom up and ask her how many minutes it should go in the microwave uh, somebody it. called the fire department in england last uh week because of a smoke alarm that kept going off the neighbors could hear it and uh, no one was doing anything about it so they called the fire department it turned out to be a parrot that was mimicking the sound of the smoke alarm. And it sounded just like the smoke alarm. 
he likes to imitate things and he imitated the smoke alarm so well that they called the fire brigade. That's a pretty good, uh, that sounds just like a smoke detector. Yeah. And uh, one more, um, a lot of stupid stuff that I've collected over the last few days. Somebody 40 miles north of Orlando called the cops last Thursday because they heard the neighbors arguing along with something about a gun. Turned out the couple was playing a video game called Call of Duty. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Are you arguing at all at any point today? No. We never argue. You We're newly married. We're at... You had something loud or something in general? It's come up. 30 minutes ago, he said he heard y'all arguing on this side. This is the cop, by the way, uh, who came to the door. Now... Not us, we don't argue, but we're playing a video game. We're playing Call of Duty. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you believe that uh, somebody would be that? I mean, I understand you. if there's trouble, you want your neighbors looking out for you. But is, is that a little excessive? You know, I think it is excessive, but I have to tell you, I have a, a younger, my younger brother plays this game, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody if a neighbor <clears throat> called the cops especially if you're living twice. in an apartment complex or something like that they might be able to hear you stuff hear somebody but, swearing you know and cursing. Uh, how do you watch a movie how do you watch rambo i mean uh, the neighbors will be calling left and right and one more chris stapleton uh, was named waffle house jukebox country artist of the year does that sound about right andrew yeah the waffle uh, house jukebox the waffle house has a jukebox and of all their jukeboxes nationwide they they know the number of times that someone selects a song um, and uh, Waffle House is named Chris Stapleton, the artist of the year on all of their jukeboxes. Um, here he is talking about how it's a dream come true for him. <laughs> you know, I've had a lot of dreams come true, but one dream that I wanted to have was to have a song on the Waffle House jukebox. <laughs> oh, there you go. And he's, and he's got it. And the latest uh. dumb Internet challenge is, and tell me if you think this is mean, because... You know, we should also, speaking of that, uh, we're going to be checking in with uh, Kim Strong. I want to see if she survived uh, camping out, by the way. Uh, And I'd like her take on this. The latest dumb Internet challenge is the dog cheese challenge. You throw or place a slice of cheese on your dog's back and then videotape it. As he tries to get it and can't get it. Some people think it's mean. Others say it's funny. Based on these people's reaction, I would probably go with funny. <laughs> okay, or stupid. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we'll see what she thinks. And did she survive? By the way, she was doing a uh, sleepover outdoors on Friday night with just a blanket and all in trying to, in the name of uh, trying to bring attention to the number of homeless people that yes. during the holidays and wintertime spend their time sleeping outdoors. She had a very angry protester, too, named Jeff, that was uh, was yelling at her about it. Why we'll, would you uh, do this? We'll get to it in a, in a bit. Are Seven, you serious? 7.50. He's talking about you. 7.50 at, <laughs> at W... <clears throat> yes. 7.50 at WYBX. After the debacle over the weekend, Syracuse... I wonder what happened to the to the basketball. The top 25 basketball rankings... They got to be today. out, right? They Later come today. out to be today. They come out at two o'clock today. Mm, you're They're gonna probably going to fall out because they were fifteenth. And yeah, you might see them fall right out of the top twenty-five. So they played. Uh, Oregon. About Syracuse uh, getting they they got clobbered by UConn the night before, and that was just like, well, it's an anomaly. It's that stinking that zone defense, and they just kept hitting three pointers. But then what happened on Friday was. They so, got beat by Manute Bull's son, Bull yeah. Bull. His name's Bull Bull? <laughs> yeah, B-O-L-B-O-L. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they were up by 10 at the half or something, weren't they? Yeah. Did they get blown out? They lost. I, I, blown out in the second half. They got blown out in the second half. They lost by at least 20. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, they got crushed. Oh, it's terrible. My good. I had no idea. I, to be mm-hmm. honest with you, I heard they were up 10 at the half, and I, I just stopped paying attention. Now, and then Oregon, Beheim who they went played. off on them in the post-game press conference saying that they can't shoot. Oh, I can't wait to hear that. So uh, the team they played, though, was ranked like 12th in the country. So at least they lost to a bad team. But now Syracuse is 2-2. Two and two. I mean, they lost to a good team. A good team. A good team, yes. yeah. 2-2. Two and two, um, Yeah. They're already now, not going to make the tournament. Now uh, now, now, Syracuse football, uh, which still has had a, uh, a, a really an, an amazing season. Sure. But the, their one shot here at, and this is their second shot at playing uh, a big team, uh, of course, Clemson. They almost beat, 
But now here they are after everybody's like, you know, this team is for real. They've gained their confidence, and they just got pummeled by uh, by Notre Dame on Saturday on national TV. Yeah, it was ugly. Of course, not having Eric Dungy, you know, he left in the first half with they were still calling an upper body injury. That hurts. Um, DeVito came in and looked like it wasn't the right moment for him to be emerging on a national stage like that. Um, I hope Dungy can return this week because they're going to play Boston College, and then, of course, Syracuse will have a bowl after this, but, you know, it's a... Well, you're going to want to... I mean, this is a... It's, it's, had this loss come early in the season, they would have felt so much better, right? Yeah. Uh, but we're looking at this team that almost knocked off Clemson, that, boy, they're much better than anybody thinks. We could be top five after this weekend. And, uh, by the way, number 19, uh, Syracuse has fallen... Oh, pretty good, though. ...to number 19. No doubt about it. It's still good. It's they're, just... they're in the top 25. Yeah. This is... A rebuilding of a program which no one thought would ever even have a chance at a at a national stage ever again. Uh, Kim Strong, we said that uh, she did a, a a a stunt, if you will, on Friday night, sleeping out in the cold with nothing but a blanket huddled up against the building over on Broad Street in an effort to uh, bring awareness to the number of people that will be homeless and sleeping outside during the winter months. Uh, Kim is on the line right now. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. We wanted to make sure you're still alive. Uh, of course, I'm still alive. <laughs> so how did it go, and did you raise some, some decent money and, and all of that? Raised about $700 for Covenant House. Okay. Which was, you know, that's, that's not bad good. for my first year doing it. It'll yeah. be bigger next year. <laughs> and uh, I uh, did some videos online while I was out there, and now I've got a whole group of women who are going to be crocheting maps for the homeless because I sat on one that was crocheted for me out of garbage, um, grocery bags. Oh, that's cool. Interesting. And, and it really, really did help keep the cold away from my body for so, most of the night. So it's, I got a little chilly, you know, about I'll 3 o'clock, 2.30. Yeah. Uh, but so you're saying these? Uh, this is a, a blanket made out of grocery bags? Yeah, they actually uh, kind of not sew them, crochet them together. And it's a mat, and mine was like six foot long, even though I'm only five foot tall. Mm -hmm. And it's about four foot wide. And they can, they're lightweight. People can roll them up and carry them with them, but it protects you from the moisture. Mm, okay. And it really did give a pretty good barrier for cold. I mean, there's nothing that's going to stop, yeah. you know, 10 below, but it, it definitely helped a lot to keep my butt from going numb. Wow. And did you have other people out there monitoring and hanging with you? Or no, were you all in, you that were... was, it was just me this time. Wow. Most of the people who know me are in are in it for animals, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but so they're not going to necessarily stand up for homeless. But <laughs> a lot right. of them did contribute, like... and some brought me hot chocolate and coffee. And again, it's more to get the conversation going in the community yeah. that these places need support, like rescue mm -hmm. mission and Emmaus yep. House, and um, you know, and teens need a backup system in place. Yeah. So, uh, and a lot of this is um, because there's so many services and places where people can go, and we're going to be talking to. Uh, Jim over at the Utica Rescue Mission was a good example. But um, there are those that don't want to go into a shelter. And and to me, it's got to be drugs or mental illness um, that would prevent you from what, what would inspire you to want to sleep outside, right? Well, some, well, I don't know that people necessarily want to sleep outside. Sometimes it's pride because you got to remember, not all mentally ill people or not all homeless people are mentally ill. Some have fallen on bad times. Mm -hmm. um, some feel they don't deserve help. Okay. Um, you know, it's kind of like a victim, you know, thing. Some are afraid of the system because they don't know how to maneuver it and operate right. in it, and they get very turned off by it. Um, so it's a whole different – there's a lot of different reasons. There, just like there isn't one rich person, there isn't one right. homeless person. And and you said that five years ago you actually fell on hard times and, and – yep. 30 days, I lived out of my car. Yeah. Uh, which, and, you know, that was in the summer, and I had a car. Yeah, you know, right. so, But it was still really difficult. Yeah. Because you never feel, and I had two dogs with me, mm. and you still never feel safe. Yeah. Because it's amazing to go behind your four walls at night in your home, your apartment, whatever. Yeah, lock your door. And to lock yeah. your door and to go to sleep now. You know, is there crime and all that stuff? Of course there is. But you still feel safe. You still have a place to take a sure. shower. You still have a place to go to the bathroom. Right, right. You know, and these are things that, you know, not that we take for granted, but when you're homeless, it's a whole yeah. different ball game. And do you have enough money to eat? And do you have enough sure. money to drink? And you try to be invisible 
because you don't want to be bothered right, by anybody. Right. Well, listen, uh, thank you for what you did out there and a great thing raising the money. And we'll keep track of what you do the next time. Kim, thanks so much. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, Have a great day. You too. Happy Thanksgiving. Can you believe uh, Jim Hayde from the Utica Rescue Mission? Uh, good morning. Well, Bill, how are you? Can you believe it's going to be so cold this week? We're going to yeah, be it's going to get chilly. in the, um, like, Thanksgiving Day is going to be frigid. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure we're going to get into the teens on Thanksgiving Day. It's going to be very cold, uh, which means there are a lot of people out there. And do you find that people uh, who are homeless, do you find that, as Kim Strong, we were talking to her at the top of the hour, and she was doing an event on Friday night where she camped out mm-hmm. in the cold, do you find some people just refuse to come in? I mean, that is some of the case. I mean, some of it has to do with pride. Um, some of it has to do with, um, you know, they're, they're really, they want to be on their own. You know, they yeah. don't want to go through the system, we'll say, or or need assistance and, and those kind of things. But, um, you know, the governor put in this uh, executive order a few years ago to try and get everybody off the street when it mm-hmm. gets below freezing, 32 degrees. And we're seeing an uptake in that in our shelter. Um, right. A year ago, we expanded our shelter beds, um, and they're full. Um, so is it uh, he can't make someone come in though, right? No, you can't force them. Right. I mean, you know, we're in partnership are we, as always with the sheriff's department, so forth, mm-hmm. to try and entice them to get out of the elements. Yeah, yeah. But you can't, you know, grab them by the collar. Right. You can't. So make the executive somebody. order basically mm-hmm. says that you know police and or law enforcement at that point thirty two below have have to approach a homeless person. Yeah. I mean, and and you know we're blessed by having a great sheriff's department and uh, Utica police who do that almost every night. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. trying to anyway. get them out of the right. elements. I'm not sure we needed the governor's executive right. order for that. Uh, okay, so what do you have? Obviously, this is a big time of year for big you time guys. Of year Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving, yeah. I mean, yeah. just a couple of days away. Um, we're seeing, you know, I've been there four or five years now, and this is um, every year we've seen our numbers go up. We're expected to serve on, on Thanksgiving Day close to two thousand people. Wow! Um, both in house and delivery of meals. Yeah. And you know who uh, really every year I have to give him a plug, Jim Rondinelli, our very own Jim Rondinelli, I think serves every Thanksgiving. Uh, at he, the does. Res- he does. He does. Yeah, mission. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He's there. You know, he puts the help put the meals together, uh, get delivered. Um, we're expecting to deliver probably eleven, twelve hundred 1,200 meals this year. Wow. Wow. And then do another five, six, seven hundred in do the, the uh, Also, do you get help, too, from the Pioneers and from the uh, Utica Comets? Actually, the Utica Comets are coming out today. They're coming today. Uh, they're going to be out today, and they're going to be handing out 300 turkeys. Wow. Uh, the team, wow. the coaches, everybody will be there. They'll be handing out potatoes, stuffing. Uh, they're, they're just been, they've been doing this every year, and every year they've increased the number of turkeys. So these are handed out to people that um, get wanna, to take wanna it home? Want to take it home, be able oh, okay. to you know, prepare their own meal at home. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, so I want to ask you, so the difference in the clientele for those who would take a turkey, go home, Obviously, they probably have a family. Maybe they sure. just want to eat alone. Mm-hmm. But you, when you're talking about five, six, seven hundred people, you're going to serve in the shelter right Thursday, in the, right in the dining room. Yep. Primarily, those are individuals. Uh, there's individuals, but there's sometimes there's families. I mean, you yeah. know, and it's sad to see that a single mom comes in with five or six little kids. Um, you know, and this is going to be their Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, you know, most of us will be having a traditional dinner at home with family and friends, mm-hmm. but this is their this is their time to, to come together, and it's it's hard to see that. Uh, people fall in hard times for yep. a lot of the different things. Well, I saw the report last night on 60 Minutes that had Tim Green. Prior to that, the report, the segment that was on before that, had a story of a uh, of a young lady that uh, was well behaved. Everything was great. All of a sudden, she she took uh, some oxycotton, then couldn't find any more, and then all of a sudden it turned to heroin. Oh. And and she her mother she would not come in. They had contact with her. They could not get her and her boyfriend to mm-hmm. come in out of the, from the outside. Mm-hmm. And her mother actually went out and camped out with her. Yeah. Call it camped out. They're living. Uh, um, sure. That's how her mother got to see her. Right. She witnessed went out. Witnessed her drug use, too. I witnessed the drug part. use. Yeah, they were, she was injecting yeah. and smoking crack. Yeah. But they've gotten her out, and she's clean today. Well, um, for that. I mean, you know, but and, do you see a lot of that? I mean, drugs have got to play a huge role in the increase today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know. We have the Addiction Stabilization Center, and again, we're busting at the doors. Um, yeah. You know, again, Governor Cuomo has been throwing a lot of money at this uh, epidemic, but it's still on the rise. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're seeing the numbers there. We're seeing the increase in uh, those who are struggling with mental illness. 
Um, every one of our programs is busting at the seams, and these are these are hard times. So with the with the um, the stabilization program, mm -hmm. I mean, it's got to be good too that these people want to change. They don't want to be do. addicted anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Because our program is volunteer. It's not you know court ordered or any of that stuff. It's it's volunteer. And obviously, some people you know they come in for a day or say, well, well I'm done yeah, with this. You yeah. Know? yeah. But we see a lot of folks. We're averaging an average stay right now about 14, 15 days uh, in stabilization. So that's enough to get them quote unquote stable. To move them on to another uh, day treatment program. Oh, awesome. Do you, uh, your thoughts on the Narcan and uh, some of these? There's, I think, there's three different types out there. I mean, there. they're lifesavers. I'll be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. I mean, we literally, have, we literally save the lives mm -hmm. of individuals coming through our shelter and other programs. Um, and we've got, you know, sometimes, I mean, we think of okay, we'll, we'll shoot somebody with Narcan, get them back. We've seen it where they've overdosed so much. We, we and the uh, paramedics have had to give them up to five and six Narcans wow. just to bring mm -hmm. them back. Mm -hmm. And, wow. you know, we're praising so God you, that they're able to do that. So what do you say, though, to the uh, to people who say, uh, critics, saying all you're doing is enabling them? Well, I mean, Narcan is really bringing them back to life. Right. I mean, so right. we can help them. Right. Um, the, you know, it's it's so much, you know, it's being mixed with fentanyl and all of this other stuff that's being mm -hmm. mixed with. You yeah. never know what you're going to get. Right. And, you know, it might be week one day. The next day you go back to the same dealer and it's is the strength is 10 times and it's yeah. going to kill you. It's awful. So how do we? Uh, you must, how do you not become depressed? For God's sakes, I'm depressed just talking to you. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean the, the the blessing is we have a great community. Yeah, it, it supports all these programs. In addition to you know, for us being faith based, you know, God plays a huge part in that. I mean, only God can overcome some of these demons mm -hmm. that people are facing every day. Yeah, and and that's the blessing part. But we do have a great community that supports us. You know, Thanksgiving is a good time for that. They bring in donations of food. They volunteer their time, like Jim does, and so many others. But they also, um, all through the year, support us. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, this is something epidemic is every day of the year. But, you know, on any given night now with the, our expansion of our West Street project, we have 200 people staying on our campus on any given night. Wow. And it grows. And it grows. It's growing. You're and watching it's growing. it grow. And we're not and the only the, one out there. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've been around a long time, probably the longest. But there's other organizations out there like Insight House and, and Catholic Charities and Emmaus House and Johnson Park. Who, who are still seeing it. Yeah. You know? What do you, uh, you have rules over there, though. I mean, you, obviously, obviously, if you have yeah. to have strong rules, explain how that works. Because you could, sure. you could turn someone away if they're, if they're a danger to those that are inside. Right. I mean, what we do is, I mean, you know, some individuals, especially at this time of year, uh, they might come in, they're intoxicated or they're high. Rather than t putting them in the shelter where they could do harm to themselves or somebody else, mm -hmm. we send them over to ASC. You get them to help. Hey, you know, why don't you get yourself cleaned up a little bit? Come on back to the shelter. We'll take you yeah, in. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have. We certainly do, and we have random drug tests. If, if we think or suspect somebody is, and no matter what program it is, we 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 test them up. So and you have it. the right to do that because if hey, if you want to be here, you're going to have to follow these right. Yeah. Follow these the rules, rules. Right. So, right. Absolutely. so that's interesting too. I mean, everybody, and rightfully so. I mean, it's one of the. It is the, probably the biggest crisis that's facing our country now. But you know, with the addiction stabilization center, right. we don't think that people just maybe are battling just alcohol. It's not always heroin or opioids, right? right? Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, years ago, I mean, we used to use the term there was drunkards on the street. Alcohol was the drug of choice. That, uh, the heroin epidemic surpassed that for the first time ever um, about two years ago, a year and a half ago. So that is really the drug of choice over and above alcohol. That's unbelievable. You have yeah, more people yeah. high on heroin and opioids than mm -hmm. alcohol. That right. is unbelievable. Yeah, for the first time ever. Something you said about drug testing, I didn't realize you can turn around results that quick to know if someone can. Yeah. Uh, is intoxicated. Mm -hmm. that's, that's I mean, the, real, the struggle with us right now is this whole synthetic marijuana that's mm -hmm. out there um, because they're always changing the makeup of that. Um, and some of that stuff we have to send out for, but we can get a turnaround within 24 hours. But we can get drug testing kits that will give us an instant uh, notification, much like you know the police use. Yeah, um, yeah. we we know whether somebody is intoxicated or high on whatever it might be. All right, how do uh, people help out? So you have the uh, your Thanksgiving banquet is eleven a.m. till two thirty on Thursday. On Thursday, absolutely. And uh, and you also have what is the workout? What is that that's happening? The uh, Thrive Athletic Center is doing uh, oh, rescue right. mission. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. they're the proceeds from right. a lot of people doing workout fundraisers. Okay. So yeah, that's absolutely, and the run, run, you know, the right. run, the run mm -hmm. that's uh, every year. Uh, uh, on Thanksgiving morning, uh, can donations come in? A lot of that comes to us as well. So a lot of people can get involved in a lot cool. of different ways. And if people need a meal, they can call us, and we can deliver that for them. Is All that right. the, the uh, turkey trot? That goes yes. On? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Wayne will be on uh, to give more details on that. All right, uh, <laughs> nice job, and good luck, and Thank you. Uh, stay it. positive. You seem to be Absolutely. able to do that. So yes. Thanks. The Dungy situation, um, New York Post is asking the question,
Well, it's kind of the leading headline. Yeah. Um, Eric Dungy's Syracuse career may be over after likely back injury. That was from a day ago. I don't know how they know anything because they uh, Baber said that it wouldn't be uh, they won't know anything until he's examined in, in Syracuse. Yeah. So I who who knows? Yeah, I, I agree. There's no word from Syracuse University on what the injury actually is. Yeah. That's the first question. Mm-hmm. Will he be ready to go against Boston College this weekend? We'll have to wait and see. And then as Davey pointed out, you know, you don't get into bowl season until you're almost to Christmas. So right. he would have approximately, give or take, a month to recover. So I actually do think we'll see Dungy again. Yeah. He is. He has a real problem being injury prone. Uh, Dungy, yeah. Big, big problem. This is the... I, I mean, I guess he's almost through the whole season, but this is the latest he's gone into a season without yeah, having an injury. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, the 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 what we said. Jim Zek is upset over the Tenney thing. Yeah, I, I simply said that that Brindisi is is leading now by three thousand two hundred votes, and once Oneida County comes out today, there's a pretty darn good chance that we might be in a position where a winner would be called. Uh, is that, and, and his response to that is what? Let's get this straight. Okay. There are both. Is absent- he scolding me? Is he scolding me? Maybe. Or All scolding right. me to scold you. Okay. Let's get this straight. <laughs> there are both absentee ballot and affidavit ballots being counted. More to come, Bill, on affidavit ballots. Shock face emoji. <laughs> All right, so are they going to go down the road and, and try to say that um, – that are they going to fight this? I don't think so. I, it's getting to be to the point – now, listen, if the outcome is 1,000 votes that separates them, but the lead for Anthony is growing now. So It's growing, and we're – and and I'm – And he's winning are, counties. He's more than double. Are we, first of all, he's winning counties – in the absentee vote that he, he lost. lost. Yeah. He got beat handily and I and it was by a couple thousand votes in Herkimer County, which I thought was a, a pretty good performance for a very Republican county. But um but at the at the end of the day, it's going in the wrong direction. If it's you're more than if doubled you're Tenny, his lead. right, you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah. I, I don't see the path for her is extremely narrow, Jim. Um but it seems like they're going to be fighting. Uh, they're going to be fighting some of these. Uh, like he keeps alluding that there's some sort of a corruption going on. Yeah. Well, um, I haven't gotten his reply yet, but I'll just say this for now: angry face emoji. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, all I'm saying is, once we find out where Oneida County is, and there'd be no reason for us to believe that Oneida County, we have the election trend, but now we have the absentee trend going on. And the absentee trend is that he is overperforming with absentee ballots. Mm-hmm. Overperforming. Yes. You know, so, he would he she needed these type of numbers to come make the comeback. Correct. He's more than doubled his lead. He's what she's doing is what he needed to uh, what he's, he's doing, doing is what she needed to do. That's correct. Yeah. All right. Well, again, Oneida County is not out as of yet, but It's uh, not over. I'm just it, saying it's we said it's not over, and not, I even getting close. Even corrected, um, even corrected uh, Andrew on that story. I wouldn't expect her to concede at this point. Right? No, no. I'm just saying that she hasn't yet. Right. Rightfully so. Okay. She, she I wants just to wouldn't, wait the I wouldn't expect her to concede at this point anyway. Because listen, she could win incredibly huge. I just don't see. It. She's got to win eighty percent of the remaining votes. She's got to win by eighty twenty. From here going forward. Do you understand that? That's big. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Jim. Jim, do you understand oh, that, man? I, yes, I do. Uh, not you, Jim. Oh, Ron, the, uh, Zeka. Jim Zeka. But I do yeah. understand that as well. That's a big number. No- I mean, that's it a is. big number to overcome. Yes, it is. I mean, uh, I, I kind of think Brindisi actually has his hand on the right on the cork. Right there. Ready. It's almost ready to go. That's my take. Uh, soccer. Soccer. I went to the uh, exhibition game, inter-squad game yesterday, Utica City FC. It was impressive. Uh, first off, the crowd. Uh, I know it was free tickets, but still you got to get the people out there. there yeah. I 
they never released, I don't think, an official attendance, but there had to be 24 or 2,500 yeah, people. Yeah, I drove wow. by the There were very wow. few empty seats. So I drove by the Adirondack Bank yeah. Center on Sunday. That, that is awesome. I'm yes. gonna, yeah, I'm going to say about 24, between 24 and 2,500. Wow, that's big. It's a good product. I mean, it's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, if you're thinking of these soccer games, you watch the outdoor soccer, one nothing, and yeah. hardly any goals. There's a, It was 4-3, to three, so not a ton of goals, but a lot of action. Uh, the neat thing is you've got the board, so now you can sort of use those to players were like passing off the boards wow. or, or if you miss like a shot and it hits the the board it will bounce out and you put the rebound in so it was a lot of action a lot of fun and i think it's going to do well i really do do they do does the uh does the screen stay up so there's no balls that are going like out into the crowd well, no, they, there's the, no glass no glass there's no, so a couple balls got kicked into the crowd of okay. course in back of the net they hit the netting yeah yeah but a couple got kicked in on the side and uh, of course the announcer says please you know Return the ball, the ball and, and our own mood. Yeah. yeah, like they're going to get to keep the soccer yeah. ball. Hello, it's not like it's a puck there, exactly. Johnny Rocket. Well, I want to say Man. Jim had some good photos, and, and did you get some yes, good yeah. photos yeah. up on yeah, our website? You see them on our yeah. website. Yeah, but it was. I think it's going to do. I think they're going to do well. It it's like, like hockey. It's like soccer following hockey rules exactly. a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. It's, there were, you can tell too when they were warming up and during the game too. You know, we talk about how this is the top indoor league, and you can see these are highly skilled players. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're good players. Yeah. They're very good. All right, very interesting. So that yesterday was the exhibition. It was yeah. free. The home opener is what, like December, uh, December 1st? December 2nd. December 2nd. Mm-hmm. December 1st is on the road against Harrisburg. And then December 2nd is the home opener against the Baltimore Blast, who are four-time defending champions. So that should be a, a good test for them and also a good game for the fans to go out to see. Oh, Pretty cool. Um, on Saturday, it was a very big game for Utica College football. They have won their first ever bowl game. Oh, how about that? Congrats, Coach. coach. Blaise Faggiano standing by right now from UC. Good morning, Coach. Congratulations. Good morning, guys. Thanks thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. So, you know, and I, I think every time we, uh, at least every other time we talk, I always go back to, I remember when the program began. And, uh, and it was not that long ago. But look how far you guys have come since the start of this uh, program at UC. Well, I, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, 2001 was the first year that we played. Was we were independent, and uh, you know, here we are. Uh, and I can finally say to you, um, and this is the first interview I've had post that. You know, that we brought home our first championship to Utica, and we're very proud to to do that, and, and against a quality opponent. You know, and uh, yep. just a great, just a great uh, win for our program, for our kids, for our season going into the off season. It was a, it was a wild football game. The kids played their hearts out, overcame a ton of adversity. Um, and uh, it was just a wild game, you know, wild game. And, uh, and I'm sure all the local fans love the fact that our quarterback happens to be from Utica, New York. I know that they, they like that. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of our captains is from BVS, you know, had, had three big pass breakups in the game, and our guys just really played played the, played, the, played tough. They really did. And, and listen, uh, you played Ithaca um, on, on Saturday. 44-42 was the uh, final, so it was a wild game. Just a little history. The ECAC has been around forever. The ECAC conference, mm-hmm. and although in certain uh, like track and hockey, you know, kind of people are forming their own conferences and they're going away from the ECAC. I've been, ECAC. I've been a part of ECAC bowl games for a long time. You know, it's interesting numbers, right? Division one, right? FBS. There's 129 mm-hmm. teams. About 80 of them go to bowl games, guys. Right? Right. 80 of them go to bowl. I mean, it's just ridic- yeah. ridiculous. Ridiculous yeah. amount of opportunities. Yep. And in Division one, they play 12 games right. after their season. So we play the least amount of football as anyone, right? We have 10 regular season games. We have no spring football in pads. And so, you know, for us, there's 250 Division Three teams. 32 teams go to the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then you have these, you know, these ECAC bowl games. So I think there was only, I think it was 42 teams playing where the rest of the country turned their gear in. So anytime you get a chance to have a postseason yeah. game, um, you know, the fact that it was against Ithaca, who was, you know, eight and two and, I believe we had him ranked fifth in the East region. And then you look back on the season and, and we did very well against, we were four and one against all the private schools that we, that we compete against, you know, in football yeah. recruiting and for students. So it was a, uh, it was a great one. Well, listen, congratulations. And this all helps. I, mean, I think we say this every year, you know, you have a, a great season. It builds, it really builds for, for the next year. Well, it, it, you know, this is our third bowl game in five years, but the yeah. first one that we've won. Right. Now you know. We're, now we're talking about you know ordering ordering bowl rings. You know what I mean. Wow. The kids get all fired up about that. You yeah, know, that's got to be a good recruiting like, tool. Like big for blue you. stone with a big U on there. They're oh, all fired up for that. That's awesome. And um, you know, we had twenty six seniors, which was the most we've ever had. 
Um, kind of on the QT, we're going to have a pretty good announcement today for all conference. I think we're going to break a record for there and all wow. conference performers. And the Empire Eight, for those who don't know, is one of the by far one of the best conferences in the country. Mm-hmm. You know, and so yep. for our guys to have a winning record in conference, represent our conference against Ithaca, who used to be in our conference. Mm-hmm. We've played Ithaca for like 18 years or something. Yeah. That's crazy, yeah. I think, since we started. Mm-hmm. And now they, they jumped ship. They're in the Liberty League. You know, they're in the other conference, yep. you know. And uh, so that was a really good umpire rate win, um, you know, for, for our program. Well, listen, congratulations. It's doing nothing but growing. First bowl, uh, bowl game. And when the, when the rings come in, you got you to gotta come in studio so we can get a glance at yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to. Absolutely right. love to. All Appreciate right. you guys having me on. Fear the Moose. All right, uh, Coach Flace Fagiano. Fear, Fear the Moose. Uh, thanks so much. Congrats. Tomorrow is the busiest travel day. Everybody okay? <laughs> the busiest travel day in America. In the world. Is tomorrow. Uh, busier than Wednesday. Same thing for shopping, right? Uh, a lot of people say you can't go in, a, in the grocery store on Wednesday. But in reality, it's busier on Tuesday than it is on Wednesday. You know, and I expect it to be extremely busy both Tuesday and Wednesday. I have to tell you, Carter, we did a little pre-birthday celebration for my son on Saturday. We just had a little get-together. So I had to stop and get some last-minute things, soda, like little things, you know. It was so busy at Walmart in New Hartford, I couldn't believe it. I just went in to get a few bottles of Swamp, soda. Yeah. Was... You go into the store, and you can hear it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's like the band's dun, playing. Dun, dun, dun. And everybody's kind of fighting for spots and spaces, and they're grabbing oh, at dun, stuff. Dun, 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 yeah, you know dun, what I'm dun, dun, yeah. And then Saturday, it was dun, over dun, dun. at Price Shopper there, which it was quite busy there yeah. as well. A writer for Thrillist ate nothing but cereal, breakfast cereal, for a week, and he talked about his go-to cereals and the effect it had on him on CBS yesterday morning. The assignment was basically to eat nothing but cereal for an entire week. Lucky Charms was a big one, mm. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, a lot of Rice Krispies, all the varieties, Cocoa Rice Krispies, Rice Krispie Treats. I ate 82 bowls over the course of the seven days. Yeah, This made me lethargic. It made me confused. Uh, this is mm. something I totally brought in myself. Uh, it's all carbs, carbs and sugar, right? It's carbs and sugar. They said uh, he ate so much cereal, he looks like he's been doing meth for six months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's yeah, how bad terrible. his teeth yeah. are now. Yeah, he looks terrible. like Count Chocula. Anyway, they, uh, after talking with him, they did a little, uh, little trivia um, about breakfast cereals. So can you name the first breakfast cereal company? Uh, uh, General Mills. That's what I thought. Listen in. By the early 1900s, a man named W.K. Kellogg revolutionized mornings. Wheaties is the first cereal we ever launched. Kellogg's competitor, Minneapolis-based General Mills, Mm. introduced Wheaties in the 1920s. But around the country, cereal fatigue may be setting in. Instead, eggs are on a roll, with breakfast sandwich sales up 10%. While cereal, though still an $8 billion industry, has dropped a billion over the past nine years. I like life. Yes. Do they still make that? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Cinnamon oh, life, all regular sorts of, life. Yeah, you got regular cinnamon, Reese's Peanuts, uh, life, or whatever. You can, can I get just, everything. I don't think they have that. If they did, I they would buy that. Yeah, I like life. I can't believe this woman. She's In like, general, yeah, too, eggs, I like life. I eggs are it. surpassing cereal for the best breakfast, and they're, she talks about breakfast sandwiches. So people aren't eating healthier breakfasts. They're just putting their eggs into well, Arby's, sandwiches. Well, Arby's, Arby's is out with the new Arbonator. Okay. Oh, my They're goodness. It's a sandwich with, a, with, a, with <laughs> a half a pound of roast beef, cheese sauce, Arby's sauce, horsey sauce, and curly fries on top. Roast beef, cheddar cheese sauce, horsey sauce, Arby's sauce, and curly fries. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, yes, yes. The new <laughs> Arbonator. Arby's. We have the meat. <laughs> For sandwiches. <laughs> right, isn't that what the guy Yes, 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 yeah. yes. We have the meat. All right, uh, we have two minutes before I have to uh, close out. And I wanted to uh, talk about a terrible accident that occurred out in our parking lot just a couple of days ago. Oh, and that was yes. the accident between the door of Andrew's car and... And the door of Davy's car. Yes, and the wind. The wind. What happened, the... Davy? Are you okay? Is it terrible? Is it bad? What happened? Smitty, you got to get on mic, bro. There's nothing wrong. I'm not yeah. mad about it. No, it was a. You listen. were just glaring at him, though. I saw you glaring at him. Glaring at him. Mm-hmm. 
He's ready. I, he, let me just tell you what happened, okay? The wind took your door, and it smashed into his car and caused yeah. over $2,000 worth of damage. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. $2,000? Yeah. I think I'm going to have to sell the car now. Do we have though. the People's Court theme? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to settle this right now. I don't have it. How much, I do have this. Did you get an estimate done? How much, how much damage? Have you got an estimate? No. I know this place. Big dog. Big dog. Uh, at Gookins down there in Frankfurt, they could take a look. Well, at it. I'm gonna. I told them I'm gonna try and attempt to fix How it myself. How bad was the damage? The, I don't. I. It was, You're gonna fix it? Yeah, I could do for it. him. Yeah, one of those, you know, uh, dent removal things. Did you actually see a dent? Is there a dent? It's it's, a, it is a slight dent. There's a slight a dent and a scratch. He said, and a scratch. Mm-hmm. Do you think this you is didn't the best an part? Estimate? Andrew's no. going to try to fix it himself. I love that. What try do you that, mean? Try that in a fender bender out on the highway someday, uh, uh, sir. Uh, no need to worry. I don't need your insurance information. I'll fix it for you. I'll just put the bumper on yeah, myself. I'm, I'm going to get one of those little suction cup things. I'll but pull that dent, dent right out of it. That's the thing. It is the size of a dent. I think that could be handled with the thing. If not, we'll take care of it. All right. I have good insurance. Are you okay with him fixing it, Davey? Not really. Oh. <laughs> Where's the theme? Do you have the theme? <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> You're supposed to make apparently, a ruling first, though. There was a murder involved, too, apparently. <laughs> well, no, that's what right happened before we go out to the scene. Psh. Okay. All right, well, I think you two better talk. We will. After There's some show. talking to do. You got some talking to do. Mm-hmm. You better call Judge Judy. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, okay. uh, why don't you like gosh. Judge Keeler? I think he can hash this I out. I could totally. Have, uh, and I was going to rule in your favor. Not anymore. That's it. Andrew wins the case. Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> We're blaming. It's an act of God. It was wind. It was wind that did it. It was. Now your fault. It's Mother, God's fault. Sue Mother Nature. God caused this. All right, that's it. We're uh, back here tomorrow. It is Thanksgiving week, so uh, enjoy the. It'll feel a little warm today. Not really, but compared to what it's going to be on Thursday, it's going to get really cold.